we will continue our study of minimum shift key. Let us quickly recollect what we have done earlier. So, we said that minimum shift keying is a form of continuous phase phase shift keying modulation, where your modulated signal S t is given by this expression, where theta t which is the phase of the modulated signal is specified by this expression, where the deviation ratio is chosen to be half. And on expansion of this expression, we showed that it S t can be written as sh shown here which can be written in the form of in phase and quadrature component. And we had also seen that S i t which is defined by this part of the in phase component is equal to the expression written here. And we said that this expression is valid over the range minus T b to plus T b. For our discussion without loss of generality, we are assuming the bit duration between time t equal to 0 and t equal to t b. And S q t similarly we showed that it is equal to the half sine wave and the duration of that half sine wave is over the period 0 to twice t b. So, S i t and S q t waveforms are displaced or offset by T b seconds. And the polarity of this half cosine wave and half sine wave is decided by the phase state at T equal to 0 and at T equal to T b. So, if theta 0 is equal to 0, this quantity will be positive and if theta 0 is pi then this quantity becomes negative and similarly here when theta T b is equal to pi by 2 this quantity is positive and when theta T b is equal to minus pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 modulo 2 pi this quantity is same as that. So, then this quantity becomes minus. So, we said that there are 4 states which it could have the transmitted symbol information is contained in the phase states theta 0 and theta T b. So, we will have 4 phase states when it is 0 pi by 2 we know that 1 has been transmitted when it is pi pi by 2 we know 0 has been transmitted and similarly for the other states. Now, what we want to do is to represent this signal S t in terms of orthonormal basis signals. And to do that, let us try to understand how the information is being transmitted. The information is being transmitted using this signal S t, which has two parts or two components one is a S i t component which modulates cos 2 pi f c t and we have S q t component which modulates sin 2 pi f c t. The information of the signal which has been transmitted is contained in this phase theta naught and theta t b. And the waveform 
corresponding to these states are SIT and SQT respectively. And we have seen that this waveform SIT is of the form shown here which is half cosine and the polarity of this waveform is decided by the phase state theta naught. So, if theta naught is 0 I get this positive waveform and if it is pi I get it to be negative. So, what this means that we are transmitting two states of theta naught either theta naught can be 0 or it can be pi and to do that we are using these two waveforms of opposite polarity and similarly the argument can be extended to SQT. We are transmitting the phase information by using these two waveforms and what are the phase information? Theta T be equal to either pi by 2 this waveform or theta T b is equal to minus pi by 2 given by this waveform. So, now this S t is composed of two waveforms. This waveform modulates cos 2 pi f c t. So, there will be cos 2 pi f c t in this and there is sin 2 pi f c t in this. So, your S t is composed of one waveform which goes from minus T b to plus T b and there is another waveform which goes from 0 to 2 T b. If we understand this then it is not difficult for us to see that our signal S t can be represented in terms of two orthonormal basis signals as follows. So, my task is to write S t as S 1 times phi 1 t and S 2 times phi 2 t. S 1 and S 2 are related to the phase states theta naught and theta t b respectively. So, phase information at the MSK receiver is explored in 2 T b seconds intervals. So, that the effective energy collected by this receiver corresponds to observations made during intervals of 2 T b seconds. The only difference is that those two waveforms which we have they are offset by T b. So, given this argument it is not very difficult to see that we could choose two orthonormal basis signals as follows. Phi 1 t is chosen as this signal and the duration of this phi 1 t will be between minus T b to plus T b and we will choose another orthonormal basis signal phi 2 t and its duration is going to be from 0 to 2 T b. Given this two basis signal of this duration I should be able to write my S t as this form and consequently what I am doing is I am trying to represent my signal S t which is given by this expression in terms of orthonormal basis signal. If we choose this as the orthonormal basis signal, let us see whether these two signals are orthogonal and let us try to find out the energy of each of this signal. So, first let us try to find out the orthogonality and the common interval between these two signal is 0 to T b whereas, between minus T b to 0 phi 1 t exists, but phi 2 t does not exist and similarly phi 2 t exists between T b to 2 T b, but 
phi 1 t does not exist over that duration. So, the only common interval for this two signals is 0 to t b. Let us see what happens between that duration. So, let us try to calculate this integral phi 1 t phi 2 t over the duration 0 to t b. So, I will ignore the factor of root 2 by t b associated with each of this waveforms without loss of generality. And if we write this expression using the trigonometric identities, I can rewrite this expression as 1 by 2 of this and similarly this I can write it as 1 by 2 of sin of 4 pi f c t that is why we get 1 by 4. Now, again we use the trigonometric identity and simplify this product to this summation of 2 cos terms. And if we integrate each of this individually a straightforward integration, we get these two terms and they have to be evaluated over the lower limit and the upper limit of the integral. And it is simple to see that when I do this both of these terms go to 0 and I get to 0. Here when I am doing this it is assume as usual that f c is an integer multiple of 1 by t b. Okay. So, we can say that phi 1 t and phi 2 t are orthogonal over the periods of interest. Now, let us calculate the energy of phi 1 t and phi 1 t exists between minus t b to plus t b. So, we will evaluate this expression. This expression can be rewritten using the trigonometric identity as this expression and similarly cos squared 2 pi f c t can be written using trigonometric identity as this expression. And then we take half out of both. So, I get one fourth and then multiply these two terms I will get all these terms. Now, when we integrate each of these terms, these three terms over this period minus 3 b sorry I repeat uh, when we integrate these terms over the period minus t b to plus t b all these three terms will go to 0 right? and we will get the integration of only this the constant and that will be equal to 2 t b and that is how I get 1. And similarly now it is very easy to show that even phi 2 t has unit energy over the duration 0 to 2 t b right? using the same similar procedure you will get this value. Okay. So, now we can use this phi 1 t and phi 2 t as our orthonormal basis signal. So, we will get the coefficients s 1 and s 2 they can be evaluated easily. So, s 1 would be obtained by taking the projection of s t over phi 1 t and it is very straightforward to see that your s t is given by this quantity and if I integrate this quantity complete after multiplying by phi 1 t, it is simple to see that this phi 1 t is orthogonal to this term out here, it will go to 0. So, you will get the contribution only from this term and you will get root E b cos theta naught. So, this is what we get that will be my projection of s t over phi 1 t. And similarly, we can obtain the projection of s t over phi 2 t and I will get this quantity out here. Please note this presence of minus sign because your s q t 
was without minus sign and that is why that minus sign comes with S2 that is the only difference and important to know that both the integrals for S1 and S2 are evaluated over the duration of 2 TB, but the lower limit and the upper limit are offset by duration T b. Right? So, we see that the signal constellation for this is going to be the two dimensional one and it will be as shown in this figure out here. So, in this case n is equal to capital N which is the dimension of the signal space will be equal to 2. We have four points here out here. So, there are four message points. So, this signal constellation looks very similar to QPSK case, but the difference is that in the QPSK case all the four message points correspond to four different signals. Whereas, for MSK signal constellation though we have four message points only there are two messages to be transmitted because these two message points correspond to symbol 1 and these two message points correspond to symbol 0. Now, given this based on our uh, definition for S1 and S2, we can calculate what are these values out here by choosing pro appropriate theta T b which can be plus pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. I know S 2 can be either minus root E b or plus root E b and similarly for your S 1 plus root E b or minus root E b. So, we will get this four message points and we can have the signal space characterization of the M S k as given in this table shown here. So, we have four phase states 0 minus pi by 2, pi minus pi by 2 and, and corresponding to this four phase states we have the corresponding transmitted binary signals. So, see two states this and this correspond to one binary signal that is 0 and this two states correspond to another binary signal that is 1. And corresponding to this phase states we get the coordinates of message points S 1 and S 2 as shown in this table. So, this table summarizes your MSK signal constellation. So, given the input data sequence we can use the entries of the table to derive on a bit by bit basis the two sequences of coefficients required to scale phi 1 t and phi 2 t. And once I know how to scale them that means, I am obtaining the coefficient S 1 and S 2. Then I can get my MSK signal as S 1 phi 1 t plus S 2 phi 2 t. Okay. Let us take one example to help us to understand the concepts which we have studied so far. So, I will take one example of binary sequence transmission as 1 1 0 1 0 0 0 and we want to generate the MSK waveform for this. F 1 has been assumed to 5 by 4 T b and F 2 is this. So, the difference between the two is 1 by 2 T b which is the condition to be satisfied by an MSK signal. And uh, for this case we will generate the MSK signal as follows. I have my input binary signal corresponding to this input binary signal. I have the phases specified here. So, when I transmit I assume that 
at time t equal to 0 my phase value is 0. So, at this duration t equal to t b since I am transmitting 1 my phase will increase by pi by 2. Again I am transmitting 1 so my phase will increase by pi by 2 it becomes pi. I transmit 0 during 2 t b to 3 t b. So, my phase decreases by pi by 2 and so on we will get the phase states of the sequence at each time instances. Once we know this phases we can calculate the polarity for S 1 and S 2 as follows. So, we require to know the theta for finding out the polarity of S 1 we need to know the phase state theta 0, theta 2 T b, theta 4 T b and theta 6 T b. So, if you look at theta 0 phase is assumed to be 0. So, cos 0 is 1. So, the polarity of S 1 is going to be positive. Then at 2 T b we have pi cos pi is minus 1. So, the polarity of S 1 is going to be negative okay. and similarly for 4 T b and 6 T b we can find out the polarity to be minus and plus respectively. Given this polarity remember now we can find out our S phi 1 I know my S 1 polarity I calculate my S 1 values the magnitude of S 1 is root E b. So, only the polarity has to be known. So, here it is positive. So, we choose this waveform. So, your cos function starts from here. So, this is positive like this. Here in this case your polarity has become negative. So, your cos function which we choose half cosine is negative. So, your cos 2 pi f c t becomes negative correct. And similarly this is negative and then again this becomes positive. Fine. Now, we find out similarly for the polarity of S 2. So, we have to find out the phase state at theta T b, theta 3 T b, theta phi T b and theta 7 T b. Okay. We know the phases. Now, sin of pi by 2 is 1, but remember when we are calculating S 2 there is a minus sign before that. So, this becomes negative. So, here also the state is pi by 2 sin pi by 2 is 1, but there is a minus sign. So, negative. So, we get the polarity of S 2. So, here it is going to be negative, negative, negative and positive and we choose this. So, your sine wave this here it will start like this similarly it will start like this here also it will start like this correct and here it becomes positive. So, I am just saying one half to similarly is true for the other half of this. Okay. Okay. And then we once we know this S 1 phi 1 t I know S my S 2 I add them together I get my S t and notice that your S t signal now is a continuous signal without any phase discontinuity. So, we have achieved what we desired that we want phase continuity during the inter bit switching time correct. Because we do not want the spread of the power spectral density. Okay. Now, we will try to find out the modulator for the MSK case look at the receiver and calculate the probability of error for the same. And finally, we will also evaluate the power spectral density of the minimum shift keying signal and this we will do in the next class. Thank you.